No alarm. Good area. Neighbours at work all day. It's got soft touch written all over it. It's a burglary gym. No need for a public inquiry. Yes? Mrs Finch? Yes? I'm Detective Sergeant Beach and this is DC Carver. So... Oh, yes, yes. Do come in. Come in. Thank you. Uh, I understand it was a neighbour who informed the police. Yes, uh, he saw the front door open. It was a bit of a shock when I got back and saw the police car outside. Yes. I'd only been down to the shops. It, it's pension day, you see. The officer told me not to touch anything. Uh, David, was it? Oh, that'll be PC Quinnan. That's right. The one with the nice smile. Well, at least the curtains and the three-piece don't clash no more. What are you, a decorator or a detective? Um, is there a Mr Finch? No, no. He, he passed over last year. It was his, his lung, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Well, why don't you sit down? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Oh. Uh, I made a list. I don't know why they want most of it. It's not worth much. I don't know. This grandmother clock, is it valuable? Only to me. It was my father's. I wanted to hand it on to my grandchildren. Jim. Thank you. Do you know who did this? Ah. I'm afraid it's early days yet, Mrs. Finch. Oh, call me Edna. OK, Edna. And what's your name, son? Um, I'm Don. Oh, thank you, Donald. <coughs> You're a good man. Uh, oh. You just sit there. Jim will get it. What are you doing here? Well, we had another call in the area, so, you know. Did you see any unfamiliar vehicles in the street when you went outside, or suspicious people? No, no, I'm afraid I didn't. Dave, no. uh, what's up? Been a development? Uh, no, no, sorry, Sarge. Um, well, I just wanted to check a few details with Mrs Finch, but seeing as you're here... Look, we had a bit of a whip round. It's nothing much, but, well, there you go. Oh, Battenberg, my favourite. Oh, thank you, David. Isn't he sweet? Lovely, yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. Well, I'll best be off then, yeah. Oh. See you later. Oh, I, I bet it was them. Who? Uh, two men driving around yesterday in a white van knocked on my door and asked if I needed any odd jobs doing. Do you remember what they looked like? They were in their 30s. Uh, one was ginger, large, like it had too many puddings. The other one was dark, a bit of a bruiser. But it was so polite, I didn't think... I, I should have come to you a lot. How could I be so stupid? Look, you're not to worry, all right? Now, we're going to do everything, everything we can to get your property back, aren't we, Jim? Yeah, of course. They must have thought they'd struck gold when Edna answered the door to them like that. They should be strung up by their thumbs. Let's make a few house calls, eh? They must be selling the stuff onto someone, mustn't they? We could try Mickey Dwyer. He'll buy anything, no questions asked. Nah, we've got bigger fish to reel in before we start dragging the bottom of the pool. Come on. OK, OK. But you will ring if you do hear any whispers. Good man. Well? Harry Clark's in Shadwell. He's just started a five. Jimmy McKenzie's gone back to Glasgow to be near his sick dad. And George Legg's retired to sunny Spain where he's spending his ill-gotten. So whoever this little firm's hooked up with, it's not the usual fences. Still working on the fence burglary? Yes, Gov. Poor old girl's lost nearly everything. A few sticks of furniture, sordid ornaments. Not exactly Chippendale, is it? It's the sort of stuff Mickey Dwyer used to deal in, isn't it? Yes, Gov. Mickey! Mr. Carver, this is a surprise. Hello, Mickey. How's business? 
But, you know, not bad. New government, new business opportunities. All the jets, of course. Oh, please, Mr. Carvey. Now, you know I don't touch anything dodgy now. Oh, yeah. Who's he? Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Beach. Cup to see, Sergeant. I don't even put my hands on, so chop the obnobs up. Not today, Mickey. We're looking for two blokes. Late thirties, one dark, one ginger tubby. They drive a white van. We think they've just burgled an old lady. Nah, that's terrible. There's no excuse for that. We're not stealing from the old folk. Have you had anyone matching those descriptions offering you bank gear? Mr. Carver, look, I wish I could help you, really. Hey. Don't tell me, you're going in the courier business, right? Just a little sideline. But the sort of sideline that you're still on probation for? No, these are end-of-line stock, honest. So you will still have all the paperwork, invoices, receipts? Hang on. Two blokes, you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I'll think about it. Maybe they did come in. When? About half an hour ago. I told them I weren't interested. Names? Uh, one was called Alan. Or was it Adam? He gave me the number in a mobile phone, look. Oh, which you kept because you weren't interested, right? Well, if I'd known her ripping old ladies off, I'd have gotten on the phone you right away. Yeah. You really are a model citizen, Mickey. How are you going to turn that into an address? Initiative never was your strong point, was it, Jim? Oh, hi. Um, I wonder if you could help me. I'm in the process of moving house. And a friend gave me your number, said that you might be the man to contact. Oh, you do? Excellent. And your address is? Bingo. So I call the station, Sarge. Get some extra bodies for an obo. Nah, they've probably still got the gear in the back of the van. Who knows? Might be able to get Edna her china back by tea time. But if they've already got rid of it, maybe we can catch them pulling another job. I'm Detective Sergeant Beach, and this is DC Carver. We're from Sun Hill. What can I do for you? And your name is? Paul Sims. And is this your van? Yeah. Well, half mine, half my mates. We run a removals for... Paul? What's going on? They're police. You are? Adam Carlyle. What do you want? They're asking questions about the van. It's taxed, MOT'd. What's your problem? There's no problem, Adam. What's in the bag? Well, nothing to interest you. And you can't look inside, not without a warrant. Adam! Satisfied? So what's this for? So it's illegal to own a crowbar now, is it? You know... This must be your lucky day. Why is that? Because your great big mouth has just won you both an all-expenses trip to the Nick. Where were you between 8.30 and 11.30 this morning? This morning? Hmm. <sighs> it's a hard one. We've got a witness that puts you in Lasser Street trying to sell stolen goods. Who is this witness? For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing Mr Carlyle exhibit DB1. A scrap of paper with a telephone number on You're it. You're talking about Mickey Dwyer, aren't you? So you were in Lasser Street this morning? No. Everyone knows Mickey Dwyer's got a record. And you'd believe him, rather than me and Paul, who've never been in any trouble? He's got to be joking, hasn't he? Do I look like I'm laughing? Hmm? Do you think the old lady that was burgled this morning is still enjoying the joke? Perhaps this is a good time to take a break, Sarge. Yeah, good idea. So you haven't recovered any of the property that's supposed to be stolen? No, nah, not yet. They must be hiding it somewhere. But you think they're going to lead you to it now? Well, looks to me like you jumped the gun. We've got enough to hold them, right? Oh, yeah, but... Then we're all happy, aren't we? Yeah? Cry, custody. Yeah, Don! Yeah, cheers, Reg. Mrs Finch in the front office for you. Oh, hello, Donald. So, Edna, have you remembered something? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Donald. I, I know you're terribly busy, but uh, I thought you wouldn't mind if I just dropped in to see if there was any news. You could have just phoned. <laughs> they took the phone. Oh, yeah. I am sorry. It's just that every sound I hear, I think they've come back again, and uh, I, I won't be able to sleep until you've found them. Um, look, Edna, this is just between you and me, right? Okay. 
We do have two suspects in custody. Oh, do you think they're the ones? Yes. So you've got my things, have you? Not yet, but we think they might lead us to your property. Oh, you don't know what peace of mind that gives me. Um, look, you're going to have to excuse me, Edna, all right? Yes, I know you've got work to do. But I'm sure that Reg here will help you sort a of taxi out. I don't want to be any trouble. For you, Edna, it's no trouble at all. Oh, thank you, Donald. Excuse me. Yes, Jim? It's Carlisle and Sims, Sarge. They're whinging about being released. Oh, great. Did Mrs. Finch give us anything new? Nothing. So what are you waiting for? We're going to have to cut them loose. Oh, there you are. Well, case closed, is it? I haven't had a coffee break. It's in the Geneva Convention. Yeah, we'll take all the time you need, Jim. Give him a chance to rob another poor helpless old soul, won't it? I'll be in the car. Right, Sarge. Where are we going? We're going to re-interview Edna's neighbours. Seeing you back on their doorstep might just help jog their memory, mightn't it? Come on. Go. Jim. Any luck? Well, we've hit a bit of a dead end, Gov, but uh, Sergeant Beach isn't prepared to accept that. Oh. Well, I suppose that's not surprising, considering what happened to his mum. Sorry? That leave he had a few weeks back. His mum had been burgled. Haven't caught anyone. It's not the same ammo as the pair you're looking for, but uh, she was pretty shook up. Don had to move her into sheltered housing, so I expect it's still a bit raw. Of course. Yes, hello. It's coming from there. I've got the flat upstairs. I, I wasn't sure at first. I had the telly on, but when I turned it off, I could hear all the shouting and crashing coming from down there. Do you know who owns the shop? No, I don't, but sometimes I have people in there moving things around. Oh, I think I can see someone in there, Dave. Oh, we'd better go in. All right, just stand back, please. Stand back, please. OK, thank you. <laughs> you all right? Oh, cut her off! Right, I cut her off! Oh, God, it's going to suffocate. Oh. Who did this? Oh, two guys. Oh. One of them was big. Oh, built like a brick. Classy. Oh. Tasty with his hands and all. We didn't see their faces. They jumped us from behind. Can you stand? Oh. Oh. I think we should get you back to hospital. Oh, we'll be all right. Oh. Is this your place? We rent it, yeah. We do house clearances. House clearances, you say? Yeah, that's right. With or without the owner's consent. As well as a few cuts and bruises, Sims has got a couple of cracked ribs, and Carlisle's got a badly bruised collarbone. Yeah, well, I hope it doesn't hurt. Thanks, Jamila. Okay. Dave. All right. Oh, great. Here come the reinforcements. I never thought house moving could be so dangerous. We want police protection. Adam! Oh, come on, Paul. They're psychos. Who are? I don't know. They were waiting for us when we left the Nick. They bundled us into a car, told us to take them where we keep our gear. When they couldn't find what they were looking for, they, they just went ape. So what were they looking for? Look, we've checked all the property in your shop. We know you stole it this morning. It was a clock. What kind of clock? You know, a big thing, like a grandfather clock. So where's this clock now? We've already sold it. Who to? Mickey Dwyer. There's one thing I don't get. How oh, they knew we had Carlisle and Sims in custody. It's your pal Mickey Dwyer you should be looking at. He's the one who's got some questions to answer. Mickey likes a long liquid lunch. It's probably still in the pipe's head. Police! You sure you're all right, Mickey? I'm all right. What about the clock? Sarge. Yeah, no chance. Thanks to Steptoe's yard out there. <laughs> so this is what the fuss is all about, is it? Your pal say why they wanted it? No, they're a strong silent type. Uh, George! A vehicle check. The SP. Mickey, they must have said something. Just that they come for the clock. Honey, I promised it to the missus. I shouldn't have faced those two gorillas and her any day. Ah, oh, look what they done. She's gonna kill me. Here, hold up. 
Hey, what's this? Hang on, George. Well, these ain't what I think they are. Well, I don't think they're aspirin, do you, Mickey? You haven't been branching out, have you? No wonder Mrs Finch was in a hurry to get her clock back. Well, you've got nothing to do with me. Yeah, all right, all right, Mickey, calm down. We're not going to investigate your underworld connections just yet. Uh, go ahead, George. Are you sure? And the address? Thanks. The car they got away, it's registered to one Stuart Finch. Donald! What are you doing here? Hello, Edna. We're looking for a Stuart Finch. Is he a relative of yours? Yeah, he's my grandson, but he's not in at the moment. So where is Stuart now, Edna? Oh, he's out with Ian. Ian? His brother. Oh, where are my manners? Would you like a cup of tea? Uh, no, thank you, Edna. Look, would you sit down, please? This is really serious, Edna. We need to find Ian and Stuart. We think they're involved in three assaults. No, you must have made a mistake. No, our family's never been involved with the police. <laughs> Assaults or no? What? No, don't tell me I should have known. Known what? No. Well, they're good boys, really. But when I told them about the break-in, they got really angry. And they said that the courts would only give the burglars a, a slap on the wrist. They're hot-headed, you see. Uh, is that what happened? Did they find out who broke in? Yes, it is. Do you know how? Uh, no, no. How should I know? Edna, where are your grandsons now? Uh, well, I can't help you, Donald. I, I, I'm sorry. You, you know I would if I could. Yeah. Does this mean that I'll never see my things again? Actually, we think we may have found your clock, Mrs Finch. Really? Oh, that's, that's wonderful. It is a grandmother clock. Uh, yes, yes, it was, but of course I'd, I'd have to see it, make sure it's mine. It's at the station, if you'd like to come with us now. Uh, well, no, I did say I'd get the boys' tea ready. Well, the sooner you identify it, the sooner you can have it back. So you know what to do then? Well, yeah, but so how do you want it? Relax, laid back, or, or mean and moaning? I'll leave the artistic interpretation to you, all right? Mm. Uh, ready, Jim? Yes, Sarge. Okay, this way, Edna. Yeah. Oh. Ta-da! Oh. So, what do you think, Edna? Is it your clock? Um, now that I see it, I'm not sure. Um, it looks uh, sort of different somehow. I, s I suppose I, I'm used to seeing it at home. Come in. Oh, sir, the DI's looking for you both. It sounds quite important. All right, Rich. We're not keeping waiting, have we? Um, look, Edna, uh, take all the time you need, all right? Yeah. And uh, we'll be back soon. She didn't ID it straight away, did she? Could be she isn't sure whether we know about the drugs or not. Aren't you ignoring a simpler possibility, Jim? What's that? That she doesn't know anything about the drugs. <sighs> well... I think she's had enough time, don't you? Shall we go back inside and see who's going to buy the drinks tonight? So, Mrs Finch, is this your clock? Well, I hoped it might be, but no, the longer I looked at it, uh, I'm afraid it isn't mine. But you have had a good look, though. Oh, yes, it's, it's very similar. So what about inside? Are there any distinguishing marks? No need to look inside. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> it isn't mine. Where is it? Do you know what this is, Mrs Finch? No, I don't know. This contains enough ecstasy to get the whole of Sun Hill out of its skull. Why go through with this whole thing if you didn't know what this was? Well, they told me to keep it in my house. I know I shouldn't have done it, but you can't say no to the boys. And it was you who told the boys that we had the suspects in custody. When they knew I'd been burgled, they went mad. They said I'd lost them a lot of money, and I had to come here and find out how much you knew. 
I don't know what they'll say when they know what I've told you. Edna. Listen, why don't you tell us where we can find them then? Hmm? Drug dealing, assault. They won't be around for a long time to cause <laughs> anyone any trouble. Listen, they'd let you risk facing criminal charges and you still want to protect them. And their family. Yeah. You'll find them in a gym down Taft Road, Donald. Why don't you wait here while we get them safely under lock and key, yeah? Just as you say, Donald. Oh. Okay, darling. Jim. Hang about, Sarge. What? You just gotta leave her in there. Where else would you suggest? Well, wouldn't a cell be more appropriate? What if she's using her age as a cover? If you were looking for a drugs dealer, you wouldn't look twice at someone like her. Jim, she is a victim. A poor old lady that's been bullied by her own family. Hasn't she been through enough? Sarge, look, don't you think this is a bit too close to home? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just yeah. a... Rage! Keep an eye on Mrs Finch, will you? Yeah, Sarge, wait a minute. There's... Detective Sergeant Beach, Sunhill. Oh, yeah? Hey. Nice one, Jim. Hey, I've taught the Prince all his best moves. <laughs> Didn't fancy your chances one on one, eh? Hey. And this from the man who threatened to bash his own granny. She didn't hide his drugs. You what? You didn't fall for that one, did you? Our family's never been in trouble with the police. She's got more form than the Cray twins. Are you telling me that you take orders from an old woman? She must have told you we were here. What kind of woman sells out her own blood just so that she can leg it? I'd be more worried about my own situation if I were you. Come on. See, this is a police station. We don't sell bus passes. Reg! Reg, where is she? Uh, oh, she went home. You what? Well, you didn't say anything about Keith, are you? Door, Reg! What are you going to do? Alert all ports. Circulate her description to Interpol. Stop the car. What? Stop the car! What? Over there. Hello, Edna. Can we give you a lift? No, thank you, Donald. My boss will be along in a moment. Going anywhere nice? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to Brighton to my sister's. I think where you're going, Edna, she'll be visiting you. Balls! Balls! Oh, God! In your car. Oh, God! 